Okay, well, um, welcome to our meeting tonight. This is uh, connecting to sewer services for um, our annexation phase five, project 22, Erin Lakes West and Emerald Garden. Um, I'm Carolyn Justice Henson with the Fayetteville Public Works Commission and we will be hosting this virtual meeting this evening. Um, those of you who may have attended our construction meeting when this project started, you know, we would typically have this in person, but due to the current uh, conditions with COVID-19, we are hosting a virtual meeting so that everybody can uh, stay home and hopefully stay safe and well. Um, I want to remind everybody that we will be or we are recording this meeting and a recording will be available on the PwC website um, tomorrow after this meeting. Um, if you are joining us and you have questions throughout the meeting, um, we will capture all of our questions through the chat feature. So if you would please put your question there and we will acknowledge it and, and address it as we go through our presentation. Um, and again, this is being recorded and we have everybody um, with their mics should be muted to prevent any feedback. So tonight's meeting, again, this is for Project 22, Erin Lakes West, um, Animal Garden. If you are joining us this evening, um, you would have been made aware of this. You would have received a mailed meeting notification in the bright yellow um, envelope, like you can see on the screen. Um, next week, you will start to receive your official notification that the sanitary sewer in this neighborhood is available for connection. And so this meeting is to help uh, share details about what that means for you, the property owner. Um, if you are joining us and you have not received a notice like this, please note that this is for Project 22 and the dates and some of the specifics um, to this project are, are for those that have been invited. So if you are in another part of that um, and have not received this, just know that this may not pertain to you. The information that's in this presentation is also on the PwC website. Um, you'll see it in the presentation. You can also go and see links of that. Um, Including with that is a brochure about the connection process, again, that summarizes a lot of the things that we may talk about here this evening. You will receive that with your connection notice. So um, to give you an overview of what we'll talk about this evening, um, we will give you um, post-construction um, paving information for your neighborhood. That'll be presented by Misty Manning from our Water Resources Engineering Group. Uh, we will take you through the steps for connecting to sewer service. Uh, we will give you tips on hiring a uh, plumber, best practices, and we have a member of the um, local uh, plumbers association to share those uh, tips with you. Um, we also have um, a member of the City of Fayetteville Inspections Department that would be available to answer questions that you may have. Uh, we will talk about what happens to your septic tank um, if or when you connect. We will go over how sewer is billed. Um, we will also have representatives from our Customer Programs Department um, who helps uh, customers when they are setting up new accounts associated with uh, this project. We are going to give you a breakdown of the cost related to the sewer connection and the assessment, and we are going to review the assessment process. Um, and again, just to remind you that as we go through the uh, meeting, you can ask questions uh, using the chat feature. And I am going to remove my video um, so you're only seeing the presentation. Okay. 
So at this point, I am going to turn it over to Misty Manning. Um, again, Misty is with our uh, Water Resources uh, Engineering Department, and that department is who managed the construction um, for this. Okay, so like Carolyn said, construction is complete within project area 22, which includes the sanitary sewer installation, pavement patching, and restoration. Um, there is a one-year warranty on this project for any workmanship issues um, with the restoration or the pavement patching. And PwC will be doing a six-month and a one-year warranty review. And at that time, any, any issues that we find will be addressed. Um, should you have any issues with restoration or construction process, please contact us at 910-223-4730 and let us know so we can address your concerns. Um, one of the things we do like to point out, and we pointed it out during the pre-construction meeting, is that the streets within the neighborhood were patched as part of this project. However, they are gonna be added to the City of Fayetteville's resurfacing contract in the next 12 to 18 months, and they'll be overlaid at that time. The reason we did that is because we wanted the um, natural settlement of the roadway to happen so we could get a more quality product whenever it's overlaid, but your streets will be fully resurfaced um, within the next 12 to 18 months. Also, along Fisher Road, you may notice that there is still some silt fence in place. We left that in place while vegetation established, but over the next couple of weeks, the contractor will be coming out and removing that silt fence and completing the seed work in that area. Other than that, um, we do consider construction complete, so um, we appreciate you joining us, and thank you for putting up with the inconvenience during construction. Thank you, Misty. Okay, so we're gonna go through um, the main purpose for our meeting this evening, and that is to discuss connecting to the sanitary sewer system um, so that you are aware of what this means. This is the process that involves changing your home's plumbing from um, your wastewater going to the existing septic tank so that it will now go to the newly installed sewer system. Uh, your wastewater then goes through the PwC sewer system to our treatment plants where it is treated and cleaned and returned to the Cape Fear River. So that is what this process, um, ultimately what happens with that. Um, we have an illustration that um, was shared when we had our earlier meeting this shows you how, um, kind of just a depiction of how the sewer was installed uh, in the roadway, in the street, in front of your homes, and during construction, uh, a lateral was also installed, and you are aware of that by the clean out, which is the small stack that was um, put right at your property line. What we're talking about this evening is going to be how the sewer is connected from the point of the clean out to your home. So this is just to give you that general idea. So we'd like to take you through the steps of connecting to the sanitary sewer. Um, this illustration, this flow chart is available on our website. Uh, PwC will be mailing you the connection notice and we expect that to go out uh, next week and it does go to the property owners, not the resident. So um, if you happen to be a renter, this should go to the property owners. Um, they would be the ones that get this. Now, when we're talking about the connection, I um, wanna we'll make you aware there are two separate costs to property owners. Um, the first is associated with the connection and the second is associated with the assessment. The property owner um, um, pays the cost for the connection and you need to know that uh, you are not required to connect, um, at least not required by PwC to connect but you would be responsible regardless for the assessment. 
and we will cover this later in the meeting. Um, and as you are deciding whether or not you would like to connect, I um, want to make you aware that if you do connect um, within the first eight months that this is available to you, um, you would save money, it will cost you less. Uh, typically, this waiver period um, is, there, is six months. This has been a standard practice of PwC that any of the properties in the phase five annexation, if the um, connection is made within the first six months that the service is available, um, PwC is what we call our FIFB, which is kind of considered for during the connection, that is waived. Because of the current COVID-19, uh, our commission has extended that waiver for Area 22, and it has been extended to eight months. Now, as you are um, looking at this with the waiver, um, the FIFB is currently $1,107, and we will cover some uh, cost later, but just to let you know that if you decide to connect within that eight months, um, there is a savings to you because you would not pay that fee. Um, anyone who is looking at connecting, um, the City of Fayetteville Community Development Department may have available funds um, that can help and provide assistance with the plumbing fee, but you must inquire with the City of Fayetteville and go through that um, qualification before you hire a plumber. Now, as you decide, um, if you decide you do want to connect, there are two options as far as connection. Um, you can either hire a plumber or you can do it yourself. If you do it yourself, you would be responsible for obtaining uh, the permitting, having the uh, service inspected. Uh, you also must live um, on the property or be the owner and live in the home. If you are considering doing this or having uh, hiring a plumber, um, we have this evening, uh, we're going to share with you some information, things that you need to know about hiring a plumber. Um, the first, PwC does have a list of licensed local plumbers um, available on our website. Um, PwC does not endorse or promote um, or have any preference of any specific plumber. We make this list available only for informational purposes um, and the selection of the plumber is the sole responsibility of the property owner or the customer. The plumbers that we have listed have certified that they pay taxes to Cumberland County or they employ at least two Cumberland County residents at their place of business within the county. So those are just, again, this is to make um, reference, uh, something that you can reference in making a selection for a plumber. And that may be important um, as we're gonna hear from uh, Thomas Barber, who is representing the um, Area Plumbers Association. Uh, Thomas is with Budget Reuter, and I am going to unmute Thomas and allow him to give some details, things that you need to know. Uh, a few things about uh, choosing a plumber. Uh, first and foremost, uh, make sure that you have the opportunity to meet with them and feel comfortable with them. Um, doing the work in your home. Um, always get multiple um, prices, uh, quotes or estimates. Um, don't be afraid to um, tell a, a plumber that you'd like to get other estimates because the fees uh, fair about his job, he won't mind that at all. Um, also, don't let someone um, tell you that uh, they give a better warranty than any other plumber because in the state of North Carolina, uh, they're required to stand by the workmanship of their work 
for the lifetime of the, the project or the lifetime of that, that plumber, basically. As long as they hold a license, they have to make sure that the work that they have done is um, as it should be. Um, there is a process of getting this done. Um, if you choose to do it yourself, you will have to get a permit from the city of Fevel um, and have that work done by the homeowner that lives in the home. If you do not live in the home um, or do not own the home itself, you cannot do the work by law. Um, the inspector will still need to come out, make sure the work is done properly uh, before the, the line is covered back up. Make sure when you do uh, decide to go with a plumber that your expectations and the plumber's expectations are the same. If you're wanting brand new sodded yard and you want it to look as though they've never been there, make sure he understands that because he's about to take a 5,000 pound machine across your yard and dig it up. When he puts that dirt back, if you haven't made sure that you know what he's gonna put back and he doesn't know what you expect, one or the both of you are not gonna be happy with the outcome of the job. So make sure that they understand what you're expecting so they can price it properly. Uh, obviously, if you want seeded yard, versus sawdust yard, there's gonna be a price difference. Um, make sure that uh, the plumber actually pulls a permit to do the job. Um, there are some people out there that'll come out, they'll do the job, they will not per pull the permit, they're not licensed to do the work, but they will definitely give you a price, they will definitely do the work, they'll take your money and leave. They may not actually do your job properly, you may not be able to get a hold of them later if the problem um, creates an issue. Uh, or if there's a problem that's created because of their installation. Um, make sure that they have it inspected. If, it, if a plumbing inspector does not come out to look at your home, you may not get a, a, a it may not be done properly. <clears throat> make sure that when you do choose a plumber, make sure you choose them um, in enough time so they can get to your project. There are a lot of plumbers out there doing these work but they are very busy. And if you wait to the end of the deadline or close to the deadline, and you try to find a plumber to do that work, we have found that that may not be the case. You may not be able to find one. And there is not a plumber out there that can expand it, extend the deadline. No matter what they say, PWC does not extend the deadline. Um, obviously this extra two months that they've added is, is, is new, so. It actually is worse in, in everyone's favor on this one. Um, keep in mind that uh, one of the biggest things that you need to pay attention to is the price of the job, but also com consider that the cheapest job, the cheapest price is not always the best price. Um, if they do it cheap and they don't do a good job, it's not really saving you any money. Um, Well, I'm really not sure what else to do. Well, uh, let me tell you a little bit of the process of, of how it goes to get the job. First, they'll pull the permit. Then they'll actually put the line in. Once they put the line in, they'll have to have the inspector come out, look at the job, um, confirm that it's done properly, and the, the inspector will pass it or fail it. If they fail it, don't be alarmed. Sometimes the plumbers miss a little of this or a little of that. They'll, they'll come back, they'll take care of it and then the inspector will pass it. Once it's passed by the inspection department, then they'll give us authorization to cover it back up. At that point, they'll come back, cover that line up. Um, each plumber has a different schedule. Um, so it will be working along that, that plumber schedule and also the inspector's schedule. And the plumber has no control over the inspection department and when they get out there. They do have to give them notice. They do have to have it worked into their schedule. And you know, with any of the uh, weather problems is going to affect the plumber as well as the inspector's time frame. <clears throat> if you ever have a problem with a, with a plumber, do not hesitate to, to contact the inspection department. They will look into it and make sure that things are being done as they should be. Thomas, I have two questions for sure. you. Sure. Can you, um, when you just went through that process, when the inspector authorizes it to be covered up, is that when it's considered um, complete 
and connected? Yes, when the plumber hooks it up to the city sewer, at that point, you are currently um, using the city sewer, no longer using the septic tank. Uh, once that is done, they will call for inspection. Once the inspector comes out and passes that inspection, the inspector will contact PwC and let them know that that has been connected. Um, I believe PwC is still wanting the customer to contact them and let them know that that's been done also. But the inspector, once they inspect it, the PwC will be notified of that. Okay. And the other question, can you um, talk about what, um, if people get different prices with their quotes, what are some things that impact the cost of the jobs? Okay. A um, couple things that really impact the job is the length of the line. Obviously, a 50-foot line is going to be a lot cheaper than a 400-foot line. Um, and the depth of the line. Um, there are some lines that are deeper than other. Obviously, the further away from the project you're going or from the lift station, the, you know, you're going to find the sewer line in the street is going to be deeper. Um, one of the things that uh, the PwC has really done that's helped out all the plumbers is they have allowed the contractor that puts the sewer line in to, in the street to bring that lateral closer to the surface so the plumber doesn't have to dig as deep as they used to. So it's a really good thing. They're, they really are looking at ways to save the homeowner some money by doing those types of things. Um, but um, Carolyn, are there any lift stations in this area? You mean grinder pumps? Yes. Um, According to Misty, there are no grinder pumps in this project. Okay, that that's great because um, that's a whole ball game. We don't have to get into them. Um, but basically, the biggest cost, um, other than the depth and length of the line, is how you want your yard left after the project. Um, obviously, if you have uh, a lot of trees in your yard, if you have a lot of shrubbery in your yard, or your grass is, you know, immaculately manicured and you want it done back to the way it was, obviously that's going to incur, incur more charges. And that's, some plumbers will do that on themselves and some will refer out to uh, a landscaper to do that. Uh, and that's completely up to you and the plumber that you talk with on how, how your expectations are fulfilled throughout the job. Uh, thank you, Thomas. And now we're going to move on to the next um, part of the presentation. So I'll let Thomas take his video and mute there. Um, when you connect uh, to the sewer, um, there's questions about your septic tank. So questions that I come up during this uh, process are what happens to uh, my septic tank. Uh, first, it has to be completely disconnected. Uh, currently, there are no plumbing code requirements for existing septic tanks when connecting to the sewer service. Um, but the Cumberland County Health Department, for safety purposes, recommends uh, pumping out the septic tank then crushing and filling in with soil, again, for safety purposes. But at this point, um, there are no uh, plumbing code requirements for the septic tanks. And then if you have other questions on that, um, that may be a question for a plumber um, regarding the septic tank. Um, at this point in the meeting, we're going to talk about now that you have your sewer connected, um, we're going to talk about the billing part of the sewer. After you have uh, had a plumber or connected yourself and the sewer has been inspected, um, first you would need to call PwC at 223 4600 and that is our customer programs department. Um, if you do not currently have a PwC account, um, they would help you establish account. If you already are a PwC customer for another service, um, they would add uh, sanitary sewer or wastewater um, to 
your account. Um, PwC will know that you are connected one when you call them, which we ask you to do. Um, and if they have not heard from you, PwC does receive an inspections report from uh, the city of Fayetteville. So once they get noticed through that inspection report, um, they will start the billing. Um, if you have contacted PwC and y'all have a set or expected time um, for your uh, service to be installed, when that might start billing, if there's any delay, um, they ask that you do call and make them aware of that delay so that the billing does not start if the sewer isn't actually connected. Um, the way that sewer is billed in this particular area, we have customers that fall into two different situations. Um, if you do not have PwC water, if you are currently an aqua customer, you will be billed on a flat rate. That's because sewer isn't metered. Um, if you uh, have a PwC water service or account, your sewer is billed based on your PwC water use. And I will show you, we have some examples um, of bills, so you will see how that would appear on your PwC bill. So if you, on the um, left-hand side, if you are currently a water customer, um, your sewer uh, charges will appear just below your water charges. And just as you can see in this example here, here that um, your water charge and your sewer charge are based on the same um, amount of water. If you are, an, again, an aqua customer, do not have PwC water services, you are billed on a flat rate. Um, Again, this just gives you an example of what that bill detail would look like um, with this. And then we will cover the cost um, of what that, those current charges are. So when we are talking about our, the cost associated with the connection, as I mentioned in the beginning, there are two um, costs. There's the cost related to connecting and there is the assessment. So what we're showing on the screen here, and we'll go through each uh, scenario. If you are not connecting, and this is for a um, single family home, you would just be responsible for the assessment which um, assessments for single family um, are capped. Uh, we anticipate when the council approves that, that it would be $5,000. If you are connecting, um, two things to look at. If you connect before the waiver deadline, and the waiver deadline for Area 22 is March 12th, 2021, you would not pay the facility investment fee as we mentioned earlier, um, so that that would be a savings to you. You would pay, if you were having a plumber um, do the connection, you would pay what they quote and you do that directly with the plumber. And then on your monthly usage, because that's what you pay monthly for that water to be treated, um, if you you are a PwC customer, it is billed per thousand gallons, and as of July 1, um, that is $5.28 per thousand gallons. If you are an aqua customer, you will pay a flat fee, and as of July 1, that flat fee is $37.12. If you connect after the waiver period, um, again, you're responsible for the assessment. You would pay the FIF fee at that time, whatever that FIF fee is set at. That fee is currently um, $1,107. Uh, 
um, if you connect, say, five years down the line, you will pay whatever that um, the current amount is as of your connection date. And again, you would pay your plumber, um, then you would pay your monthly sewer cost to PwC. If you are a new PwC customer, um, you may possibly be required to pay a utility deposit, but that is applicable. Um, may not apply to too many if you already have a PwC service. Now we will cover the assessments. Um, again, this is a separate cost from the connection. Um, just to go through a few details of this, you are not required to connect. However, you are responsible for the assessment. Um, and the cost of the assessment is what it costs to install the sewer mains and the service laterals. And this is shared by the property owners and PwC. Um, PwC will mail you information um, about the assessment. Um, the first part of that is the City Council will have an assessment confirmation public hearing. We expect for Area 22 that to be in the fall of 2020 um, and you will receive information on that. Um, if you have questions about that process, Mark Brown um, with PwC, our uh, Senior Customer Programs Officer, uh, his number is available here that he can uh, speak with you about that. Once that public hearing is held, um, the City Council will confirm that assessment and then PwC will mail you the assessment information and we will hold an informational meeting um, to explain the assessment and the payment options. Um, for your information, the City of Fayetteville um, and their community development does have um, funds or may have funds available um, to find out if you are eligible, uh, you can contact the Community Development Department at 433-1599. As far as the specific cost of the assessment for sing the typical single family um, property, the City Council has capped that assessment for Phase 5 at $5,000. Um, if you have a non-residential property or if your um, residential property is larger, over 180 uh, feet frontage, you would be um, billed in a different manner than that $5,000. And when you receive uh, your assessment information, you would know what that um, assessment would be for that property. Um, once you receive the assessment, uh, you have opted some of the options available for payment. It can be a one-time payment. It can be paid monthly or yearly payments up to 10 years. Um, if you choose the monthly or the yearly payments through PwC, um, the interest for the monthly or annual payments is prime plus 2%. Um, that is set by the City Council um, annually as of July 1st, and um, that prime plus 2% is not to exceed uh, 8%. And at this point, that concludes um, our meeting for this evening on what we have to present. Uh, the recording of this meeting will be available on the PwC website. Um, if you have questions regarding the connection process, you can contact our customer programs area. Um, and you can call them at 910-223-4600. You can also email them. Um, at the builders group at fayqwc.com 
Um, you would uh, identify yourself as living in Project 22 and they can answer questions that you may have on also help walk you through the uh, project on, on how this goes. And so if we do not have any questions, uh, we will close the meeting. Um, again, thank you for attending. Uh, the connection notices for Project 22 will be mailed uh, to you in the next week. And following that, this fall, um, you should receive information if you're the property owner on the assessment uh, preliminary, uh, excuse me, the assessment public hearing. So that would be the next communication that you would receive from PWC. And with that, we will close the meeting. Um, thank you for everyone who attended and everyone who was able to provide uh, information for our residents. And that closes our meeting.